Everyone is mine to torment. You do well to remember that, you little monster. Monsters are dangerous, and just now, kings are dying like flies. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. I hope you guys all had a great Thanksgiving. Since it is Black Friday and everyone is stabbing each other with pens and climbing over bodies to get cheap stuff, I thought it totally appropriate that we talk about Joffrey Baratheon today. So I'll be doing my top five things to look forward to for his character in season four, but I'll also be addressing some of the rumors that the actor Jack Gleason is going to be quitting acting after he's done on Game of Thrones, as well as the new trailer that's going to be coming pretty soon. I've also got a special announcement about a new show I'm working on. It's not quite ready yet, but I'll let you know what's going on. If you're seeing me for the first time or you've never seen any of my Game of Thrones season 4 videos then careful for spoilers from the first three seasons as well as book four. So if you don't want any spoilers then just turn the volume down and turn automatic captions on because automatic captions are awful but they make for hilarious videos. So the big thing to consider about Joffrey in season 4 is that his character has really like one big moment. Obviously we're talking about the Purple Wedding, but because he's a main character on the show, they give him a lot of extra scenes and really expand his part in a really interesting way. So what we really need to talk about is what's going to be different about his character in season four. Number five, extra scenes. So if you saw in season three, Joffrey got a lot of extra scenes. A good example of this is Joffrey, Marjorie, and Joffrey's crossbow. It was kind of a pseudo sexual three-way scene, even though none of them consummated that relationship but there's going to be a lot more of that in season four because obviously Joffrey's big moment isn't just going to happen in that first episode. One of the really awesome consequences of these extra scenes is that it gives actors a chance to improvise just a little bit. Not all the actors on Game of Thrones improvise, but every once in a while there's a subtle turn of phrase or a gesture that lends itself to something like this. I imagine it must be so exciting to squeeze your finger here and watch something die over there. Number four, more malevolence. So Joffrey will continue to get more evil. So obviously, like a lot of the mad Targaryen kings, Joffrey is a little bit crazy, and he's just gonna continue to get crazier. On the show, he's actually still pretty young. He's still a teenager. So he's not going to go crazy on, say, like the level of Mad King Ares and try to firebomb the entire city, but he will still be torturing Sansa and Tyrion and anybody else that crosses his path. Much to the chagrin of Cersei, Tywin, and now Jaime, now that he's back in King's Landing too. One of the really cool things that's already changed in the show is now that Jaime is back in King's Landing early, he has more chances to interact with Joffrey before the Purple Wedding. I think secretly what we're all hoping for is a scene where Tywin just jumps across the table and strangles Joffrey in his chair. Number three, the Reigns of Castamere. So if you saw my previous Game of Thrones video that you know Reigns of Castamere is a Lannister theme and obviously Joffrey is a Baratheon on the show but in reality he's a Lannister. So I'm really interested to see during the Purple Wedding if you hear it subtly in the background they're not going to do it like in the Red Wedding where characters play the song on the show during the wedding like you would play like a wedding march. But because David Benioff and D.B. Weiss kind of lace the theme in really softly in the background whenever a Lannister's on screen, I'm really interested to find out if they lace it into the background during the Purple Wedding. Number two, the Purple Wedding. I'm talking mostly about the ceremony, not the feast that comes after. Even if you haven't read the books, you may have heard the term Purple Wedding. What it is, is it's a name given by fans to the wedding between Joffrey and Marjorie Tyrell. The reason it's called the Purple Wedding is because Sansa wears this hairnet with amethysts in it, which are purple, and she plays this really big role in the wedding and the feast afterwards. The reason why the ceremony is number two is because of the scope and the size of the scene that they shot. So David Benioff and DBY said that this is one of the biggest scenes they've ever filmed. They had 23 named characters, that is principal actors with character names, as well as over 200 extras on set that day. It's the biggest scene they've filmed basically since the premiere. And my number one moment, the Purple Wedding Feast. So this happens after the ceremony and is basically going to be the most talked about moment on television next year. I don't want to spoil it too much, but it basically brings together a lot of running plot threads and basically throws some characters to the wolves, so to speak. One really funny thing from an HBO standpoint that I'm hoping for is that they will promote next season using save the date invitations for Joffrey and Marjorie. The Purple Wedding will be the wedding that you want to attend next year. But without spoiling things too much, write below in the comments what are your biggest questions for Joffrey in season four and what are you looking forward to most. So to address rumors that the actor Jack Leeson is quitting acting after he's done on Game of Thrones, in order to understand this you have to watch an interview he did recently at Glasgow College. 
a student asked him what his plans for the future were and he just said that he wasn't quite as interested in continuing to act. Like acting as a profession just did not interest him as much as a lot of other things. David Benioff and D.B. Weiss actually guessed that he might go into higher education. He is one of those actors in real life that's highly learned so I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up teaching at a university. Wouldn't that totally be awesome to get a degree in history from King Joffrey? He also does these really cool puppet shows with his friends when he's not filming Game of Thrones. Those aren't online yet but hopefully someone will post them eventually. In other related Game of Thrones season 4 news, there should be a season 4 teaser coming soon. Last year around this time we got our first voiceover trailer. It's not a full trailer, it's really just an actor's voice over a date. So it won't be really substantive, but I'll be sure to do a video as soon as they post that. Like I said earlier too, I'm working on a new weekly show. I'm not quite ready to announce what it is yet, but it's basically going to be like a vlog where I answer a lot of viewer questions and do a lot of things that don't fit into specific videos. Typically most of the videos I do are just about a single show, like this is just about Game of Thrones but I'm going to be working on a weekly show that allows me to combine a lot of different shows together. I don't know what it's going to be called yet, but you can leave your suggestions in the comments below. Here's my schedule for the rest of the weekend. So tonight I'll be doing my Legend of Korra book 3 video. I'll probably post that around 8 or 9 o'clock at night. And then on Saturday I'll be doing Sherlock series 3. They just announced the premiere date in the UK. And I'll also be posting my part 2 video for my Doctor Who 50th anniversary Easter eggs. Then on Sunday is the mid-season finale for Walking Dead. Right now you click here to get all my other Game of Thrones season 4 videos. And click here to get my Doctor Who 50th anniversary Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.